again, I want to stress that what we have been talked about in the first half of the presentations are cases that are localized, trying to prevent the melanoma from coming back. We were talking about what we used to believe with interferon, and we and it actually turned out to be true. We were trying to kick the can down the road. We knew the drug didn't work that well. We knew it was a crude and, and toxic way to boost the immune system compared to the treatments we have today. But we were just hoping that if we could get a few years more science, a few years more clinical trials, that new drugs would come along and that they would have better outcomes, fewer side effects, better results. We had no idea at the time how successful those trials would be. And frankly, they've exceeded all of my expectations. I never expected to see in my career the advances that we've seen uh, in the treatment of widespread melanoma. So despite everything we do surgically, despite adjuvant therapy, still some patients develop widespread disease. Very rarely somebody shows up, never knew they had melanoma at all, and already has metastatic disease and needs treatment right from the outset for widespread disease. That's what we're going to talk about in the next couple of presentations. Before you get started, yes. is, is in, interferon yep. kind of the what followed the traditional chemo? Interferon it, was not a chemotherapy, no. Interferon was, yeah, was really kind of the start of moving the in a different direction. type of immune, uh, immune stimulating drug, but a very, very general one. Dr. Tarhini showed that picture. You might see it again from Dr. Kerpetian of, of the T cell and trying to stimulate one molecule on one specific kind of immune cell. Interferon was a shotgun blast to try to stimulate the entire immune system and with it, a lot of side effects. Anyway, Dr. Karpetian is one of our newest uh, oncologists, and uh, uh, we're very excited to have her with us. She's been an expert on some of the newest drugs uh, that are now available, and she's going to tell us about all of them. So thank you all for joining today. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, first, what is stage 4 melanoma? And uh, when we think about stage 4 melanoma, is really the melanoma that is spread from original part of the melanoma to other parts of your body. And the thinking about how to treat that melanoma is really dependent on what is the extent of tumor. And what I mean with extent of tumor, let's take uh, this too. And here you see a person who has melanoma in different parts of the body. And this can be skin, this can be inner organs, like your lungs, your liver, and it can evolve also to the brain. Whereas here we see the person who has one melanoma that is in the lung, and this is presumed to be a melanoma that is spread to the lung. These both are considered to be a stage four melanoma. The first question that comes to the discussion is this a melanoma that is only one part of your body and potentially in one organ, such as in this case we see a lung, or this is a melanoma that is spread actually to different parts of your body. And why is this important? Because despite the fact that both are called stage four melanoma, management differs. And well, in this case, we potentially can use the options that Dr. Tarhini discussed previously, like a surgery, maybe at some point at radiation, of course, combined with some drugs, medications. But here is the case when you have a much more opportunity to discuss with the, what we call medical oncologists that treat the melanoma with the drugs. Today during my talk, because the time is very limited, we are going to focus type of melanoma that we cannot do a surgery because it is spread to different parts of your body. And the best way to treat it is actually the medications <coughs> that can go throughout whole your body and affect different parts of the melanoma that are located in various organs. So, why do we treat 
stage four melanoma. One and most important thing is really something that we call overall survival. And what does that mean? It's really the goal is that you live longer and with the assumption that that life is going to also have a good quality of life. So because it's always very difficult to do some drugs, study drugs that will follow you whole your life because your life can go five years, 10 years. We do some what we call surrogate points when we assume that if these surrogate points are good, then it eventually is going to impact how long you live and how good you will live. And a lot of times when you will hear your doctor talking about this, doctors will mention something which is called progression-free survival. And what this really means, we assume that medications are going to decrease, uh, that melanoma will get bigger, it will progress in your body. And often we hope that if the drugs affect this progression of survival, the progression of a disease, we are eventually going to affect your overall survival. You make you live longer. And the next thing that is really uh, something that we focus as well is what we call response rate. And what does that mean? Look at the first picture when we see a big melanoma and we assume that when we incorporate a drug here, the medications make your melanoma to shrink. And these two are something that we call a good <laughs> success of a drug. And it's something called response rate. And when we see in the first picture, this is a significant tumor shrinkage. Tumor got smaller when we look at the first picture. And in the next picture, this even disappeared, what we call a complete response. So we often use this too when we test the drug because we believe that these two are going to eventually impact your life. <clears throat> and this is the most important thing that we think about when we treat. So now, the, the way we think about treating melanoma, so this is, uh, think about this is a tumor that is in your body. And we also assume that your tumor is surrounded by something which we call immune cells, your immune body. So the way we treat nowadays melanoma with the medications, there are two important things that we assume is ongoing in your melanoma. The one thing is really the way that we can actually boost your immune system to affect the melanoma and make it shrink or go away. So this is one part that we assume will work. And here you will see that sometimes this immune system has some breaks on it, but doesn't allow your immune cells function well. And here is why we have all of those medications that all of this class of medications will affect your immune system and make it take the blockage away and make the immune cells to work well. And here I have the drugs. Often as a musician, we like to use the real name, but the patients get advertised for the trade name that you hear in a TV or something like that. So I often tell you both. So you remember what we are talking about. So here you will see Keytruda, Pembrolizumab, Obdivo Nebolumab, the centric that we use only in some circumstances, Yerwai Ipilimumab, and here I have a Rulaglumab plus, which is the Obdulac. And I have a plus sign here because Obdulac combines both Rulaglumab as well as the Nivolumab. It's a combined medication. And you will see here one other thing that is important, that I classify this as a free component because like, for example, you ask the question, pembrolizumab, nivolumab, these are same class drugs. So there's not a real difference at the best of our knowledge from their action. Now, uh, next part, the way how we think about melanoma is not just the immune system. That around 40 to 50% of patients also have a melanoma that has something which is called BRAF, B-R-A-F. 
And this is a type of thing that helps us to incorporate some other types of drugs which are called targeted therapies. And the targeted therapies are not immunotherapy. They are type of therapies that affect this BRAF just because this melanoma is driven by DRAF to grow. And here you will see three different combinations we often use these together, such as one is the BRAF drug, one is the what we call MEG drug, and you will see your provider providing two drugs. There are three of those combinations that are available in the market. They again have their real names and they have their sort of pharma pharmaceutical names. So I have it here in case you wonder what, what, are, what I'm talking about and what does it do I refer. So to summarize, thinking about how we treat the melanoma, we incorporate the immunotherapy and we incorporate for patients who have this BRAF, because again, not all patients have some type of target. <coughs> now, I want to highlight that amount of progress that has been made for treatment of really stage four melanoma. And here you will see, starting from 1980s, going up to the like uh, nowadays, there are so many medications that have been tested and eventually approved and are being in a clinic. I have some check marks here and I really don't want you to focus on those because I don't believe that any of us are using this as a single agent or interleukin 2 and etc. for a reasonable reasons that we will not focus today. I have some question marks here that you will appreciate such as this combination which is a combination of immunotherapy and targeted therapy or I have some uh, question marks here, like for a TVAG, or sing, uh, I have a single drug here, like pembrolizumab, ipilimumab, single drug, nivolumab, single drug. And the reason I have that, because I think we as a physician have to ask ourselves a question, why that was made as a choice to treat you? And I have some stars here, but I believe that these are the most common ones that you are going to discuss with your physician. And now I will proceed with explaining why I think these are real stars and why we should focus on those. So, how, why do we need to choose what we call nivolumab, ivalimumab for patients? So nivolumab is a obdivo and a yervoy because we know that for a very long time of follow-up, and I point here out 6.5 year of follow-up, 49% of patients were alive. We also know that the very long follow-up, remember I told you this is important, progression free survival, 34% uh, of patients were having no disease progression. And to highlight, while we studied it was not down to right away compare what is better, the combination of these two drugs or only the one drug, we also got some data about what, how single one drug is working. And one other important thing that we came to appreciate from this study that patients who have what we call this BRAF that you saw in the beginning, this difference two drugs versus using was much larger that we appreciate, like 38% versus 20%. Now, when we look at what does it do with the tumor to go down, we see that in 57% of patients, this tumor actually shrinks or even disappears in 11.5%. Now, we move even forward, and this is also an important factor that what if you discontinue the drug for some, some reason? You can see here that the time for this combination therapy was actually the 27 months that you were started on a new medication. And why is this important? Because it will come at some point that you have to discontinue the drug for some reason, and I will tell you in the subsequent slide. And I often tell my patients that even if you discontinue the drug, see, there is still some timeline that patients actually did not need to start on a new drug because the effect of that therapy was continuing. Now, we even know that patients who have a disease in their brain, this combination therapy works for that as well. And if you look at separately what happens in the brain, tumor shrinkage 
uh, or even disappearance happen in 54 and 43 percent subsequently. So it does work in a brain as well. And obviously, at the largest follow-up data of three years, we also know that even at the three year overall survival was 72 percent, meaning that even patients who have a disease in the brain, this combination therapy works for them as well. Now, well, if this is such a great combination, why don't we use this for all patients and we discuss alternatives? <coughs> well, because there is something that is also important and affects your life and affects your quality of life, which is called treatment-related adverse event, treatment-related side effects. And here we see in a com <coughs> different arms that we see, these are the patients who receive combination therapy and these are patients who receive only one drug. You appreciate here that almost not all patients develop some side effect. And on half of the patients, even more of that, they develop actually severe side effects. And you also appreciate that amongst those who have a very severe way, 29% actually discontinue the drug because of side effects. So this is important to, for, to discuss because this drug might work really the best but it also causes a lot of side effects, which can eventually impact the survival. So when we think about what are the alternatives to explore in those settings, then we do not feel comfortable with this number. Mm -hmm. So another combination that is more recent is the combination of nivolumab and rolatlimab, which is the same as Obdulac. And this is a relatively new medication in comparison that we have from Yervoy and Obdivo. And we here see that at the three year markup, 56% of patients were alive. And this study was actually specifically designed to compare is one drug better, only Obdivo, or two drugs better? So, and study did confirm clearly that one, two drugs are better than one drug. And then uh, you will see here that the 50% of people actually, this median PFS, what we call progression-free survival, was definitely better like 10.12 months versus 4.6 months. And if we further look what they did to the tumor, in 43%, it, it did make the tumor go down and 16% even completely disappear. So when we ask the question, obviously, what is the side effect that we get? What is the percentage? Because we know that um, the other drug works well, but also has some very significant side effects. And here we appreciate the fact that it's only like 21% of patients actually developed high grade side effects, really severe side effects, leading to discontinuation in 9% of patients. And if you recall the same number <coughs> from other drug combination, it was 55%. So this is the time when we think about when we value this risk of a side effect for patients and we discuss with them, we may actually choose to go with this combination rather than going with a combination that may have a higher of a side effect. Just to highlight that I also would like to point out that this risk is not as high when we appreciate the benefit what we get from combination therapy. Here is why a lot of times we choose actually to go with the combination of Obdula rather than single drug, what we have Nivolma. Now, one may think if this is the case, when why we shouldn't take the drug that has less side effect and try that, and then if the patients develop any uh, disease does not get better, maybe we can use the drug that has a high benefit, um, but also high side effect. So why we should choose to go with that high side effect, high benefit in the beginning? So this is where it comes. Very important to understand how each of those drugs work if you were to get another drug. I do have to highlight that although we don't have a large of a very good, good <clears throat> clinical uh, data, at some degree we understand that the same drugs, if they were given after one was already taken, they don't work as great as they used to work when they are given as a first line. Here's why we often think to go with the best regimen at the first line when you are, even, when you are diagnosed with melanoma. 
So now let's talk a little bit more about targeted therapy. As I mentioned in the beginning, there are three combinations and you often will receive two drugs. There is no one drug. We often receive uh, two pills which affect different molecules, but they have to be combined together in order to work better. And these two combinations have not been head-to-head -head compared. So if you ask us a question, yes, uh, some people they do appreciate in one over another, uh, another two, but they have not been com compared, which two are really great. However, we know what the data we have for them. So they, there is something important about these drugs, that they still result in a very high percentage of a tumor shrinkage or even complete disappearance. And there are some times that we really want to use a drug that has a higher chance for your tumor to free and more importantly, quickly to free. And these are the drugs that are really important for that degree. We also have a data when you will follow up at a five-year landmark. So what, how much do they help the patient? And while we here appreciate that something with a combination of what we call Braftovi, Mectovi, same Encorafenib and Minimetinib, they have some degree of a longer time of a, what we call disease progression, like 14.9 months in a comparison to this numerical number 11.1 with a combination of the brafinib and tromethanib or combination of amorafinib and cobimethanib, there are no head-to-head -head comparison. So you can see potentially all of these drugs being used if your tumor has something which we call Bura. What we really also do is sometimes discuss the side effects that you can develop from these drugs and they can vary and they can be in a a little bit of different degree. Like an example can be if you take the dobrafenib and tromethanib, fever is a big issue. And some, some patients may not really like that. So, and that could be a good reason not to choose that. Or for example, I had a just recently patient who developed eye inflammation, which is called uveitis. Although they are still all report, all of these drugs may cause some eye issues. Sometimes with combination and corafenib and minimetinib, graftovi one, can more a little bit of high of an eye than UVID. So we often discuss each of those with the patient and we come up with a plan that is safe from a side effect standpoint as well. Now, I would like to point out that there has been a lot of discussion, well, if for patients who have both choices, where to start, which drug to use first, because technically, if you have BRAF change in your melanoma, you can both use immunotherapy as well as targeted therapy. And uh, in 2022, this is an important study that shows, and we use these uh, curves a lot in um, evaluating how drugs work. And here you will see this axis really shows the months. And this shows percentages, proportions. Now, blue line shows here when you start with immunotherapy and you switch to targeted therapy, which is the BRAF molecules, uh, then your disease actually progresses when you are on immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. And a red line shows that you start with the targeted therapy and then you switch to immunotherapy when your disease progresses. And I always tell you, the most important thing is really the overall survival, how long you live. And this study was done specifically to show which one is better to start in the beginning and continue when you have a disease progression. And now let's take a look on these two curves. And at the 24 months, two year markup, when they evaluated what is the outcome for patient, there is one clear fact appreciated by patients who started with immunotherapy in the beginning and continued on targeted therapy did almost 20% better than patients who were started with the targeted therapy and switched to immunotherapy. Here is why in contrast to stage three disease, when we explained that these are comparable, we discussed both of those with you, 
Now that we have this data, you will hear your medical oncologist offering more of a starting with immunotherapy, even if you have a BRAF modern disease. And as long as you have no other contraindications to immunotherapy, and when switch to targeted therapy. So this data is important, but there is something we obviously appreciate here, that when you look at the beginning of curves, higher the curve, better the outcome. So you look here that in the beginning, very beginning in the first 10 months, you will see actually the high red curve, red uh, line was even higher than the blue line. So it was awful <coughs> in the beginning. So we often ask these questions, who are these patients? Because even though when we look at a clear landmark 24 months, we do tell that immunotherapy is better. These are still very important patients who did not follow the overall goal of this overall outcome of this trial. And we propose some reasons. And one of those can be that when you see patients that have a very, very large tumor in your body, and if you recall that picture when you have a tumor and around immune cells, sometimes when immune uh, cells are small and the tumor is so large and your immune system may not overcome that large tumor that you have in the body, or when we have such amount of a tumor that we really need to quickly shrink the tumor, these are might be some of the times that your doctor may prefer actually to start the targeted therapy first, and then switch, potentially switch to immunotherapy later. And we even have a clinical trial in Italy showing that that's a feasible approach to do. So while the summary will be, we will start by the rule with the immunotherapy nowadays and switch to the targeted therapy, remember that there may be cases because we appreciate this in the beginning that some patients do not really benefit from this approach. And while we do not know who those are, clearly, we, there might be cases that your doctor will prefer to start with the pills and then switch to the immunotherapy. Now, I would like to summarize, again, how we treat the stage 4 melanoma. Now, as I, we highlighted all, it is very important to know your BRAF status. While nowadays we often do the extended analysis like we spoke, we want to learn about all your tumor, other, but this one is crucially important. Every patient should have this. And the, regardless you have BRAF movement disease or you have what we call changed in your body or it is not changed, there are several things that we think about before treating. First of all, your preference. We discuss all of the adverse effects. We discuss about your general health status, how much other medical problems you have, and how important is it for you if you were to develop side effects, how much is that going to impact your life? And we think about is your disease actually in a brain? Is your disease a little bit of that an unusual place of a melanoma, such as melanomas can be also under your foot, in the gut, or you know, there are specific types of melanomas, or how big is your tumor, how much liver is impacting, or some of a marker that you will hear, LDH. It's a blob that basically tells you how much of a tumor most likely you have in your body. And then we appreciate the fact that this is what we call, really you are in a good health status, you have no other medical problem, but you have a really big melanoma, your melanoma is in the brain, that most of us would choose to go with a combination of nivolumab and nivolumab, what we call year boy combination. And some is acceptable if you have a concern about, you know, that your disease is um, side effects may be like a compromising your life and etc. And this is a very like a long discussion with the patient. So if we see that really we don't have any of those high risk factors and uh, everything is good. And so I would clearly be open to choose nivolumab and nolatlumab, which is the Abdullah combination. And I have to tell you that we here at United States are very uh, fortunate to have this combination approved and we use this often. I 
I we as a physician, as I highlight here in very, very light, we should really ask ourselves a question why we have to choose this single agent as opposed to this combination. And this can be an answer, and for example, if someone has some serious comorbidities or has something which is called autoimmune disease, which already boosts your immune system, and we, have, we are very concerned about side effects. So in some circumstances, we can definitely use these single agents. And obviously for patients who are not eligible or if they tried the immunotherapy and it did not work or some for other reason, we can use the pills for patients who have a BRAF mutation. And I'd like to conclude that obviously clinical trials are available. They are available to start like from frontline when you did not receive any therapy. We encourage always patients to participate. We discuss with them all of the standards. We encourage to, because whatever is a clinical trial today, whatever is standard today was a clinical trial years ago. But I always like to highlight as well that anti-cancer drugs are not always the right choice of treatment. And if you have some comorbidities or there is something more that these drugs may help, <coughs> may even harm, only supportive care may be also reasonable. Oh, this is all I have. Thank you.